From the station that made country music famous, 650 AM WSM, this is a Coffee Country and Cody podcast. Hey, it's Charlie Matos, and in this episode of our Coffee Country and Cody podcast, we Zoom with ACM and CMA award-winning singer-songwriter Jamie Johnson. Jamie was getting set to play the Tuesday Night Opry. This was recorded the morning of August the 24th of 2021. Enjoy our Coffee Country and Cody podcast with Jamie Johnson. From WSM Radio, this is Coffee Country and Cody. 6.50 a.m. WSM and Circle Television, Tuesday night in America's Music City. The Tuesday Night Opry will feature one of the great singer-songwriters, a multi-time ACM and CMA Award winner. It is so great to say good morning to our buddy Jamie Johnson. Good morning, and thanks for thanks for hanging with us this morning, Jamie. I don't know you're talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> well, first off, how you feeling? Because I know you are not a guy that likes to cancel anything, but this was Opry performance was supposed to be about a month ago. But if you're a singer songwriter, the singer portion of that is kind of important, and you can't really do that with laryngitis. No, you can't. I, I had gone out to Kansas uh, to do some uh, some training. Uh, I'm a pilot, so I, I, I went out there to do some some flight training. <clears throat> in Wichita, while I was there, the, the cottonwood pollen was through the roof. So <laughs> I came back from hoofing cottonwood pollen for about a week, and I couldn't talk, so we had to let it go. If I can't talk, you darn sure don't want to hear me sing. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been flying planes? Um, I guess on tour about five years, but I didn't even start uh, logging hours until covid mm-hmm. And uh, I went ahead and got pilot's license and instrument rating and all that stuff. I'm flying a flying a king here now. Yeah. When I uh, when I first you'll appreciate this. When I first moved to town, I was at the other end of the AM spectrum at WLAC, and one of our FM DJs at our FM station uh, was a pilot. And one day he just out of the blue asked me and go, "Hey, I'm heading over to Cornelia Fort. Going to just do some touch and go landings. Want to come with me?" And I'm like, "Yeah," because I don't have a fear of heights and that kind of thing. I love planes, and I didn't realize what touch and go landings were until we did about nine of them. And I'm like. What if this guy only has eight good landings left in him? <laughs> like it was a little, it was a little frightening, Jamie, to be honest. But uh, well, more power to you on that. So um, you know, it's interesting times too, though, because even something as simple as like allergies and laryngitis, you almost feel compelled to qualify that it's only allergies, folks. I'm going to be all right in a few days. I just I'll be able to talk, you know. So uh, we, we've come a, come a little ways from. Last year's version of cough twice when you get shot at. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I mentioned you are a, a multi-time ACM and CMA award-winning songwriter, and boy, I tell you what, over the last couple of weeks, the songwriting community has lost a couple of really great ones. Nancy Griffith, uh, a little over a week ago, and then Friday, just before the Opry show, we confirmed that uh, Country Music Hall of Famer and Songwriter Hall of Famer Tom T. Hall had passed away. Did you Did you know either one of them, Jamie? I, I never met either one of them. Uh, I, I've been I've been covering Tom T songs uh, since uh, since I was about twenty years old, just about. And uh, Nancy Griffith, man, she had some some huge songs that I I grew up listening to my whole life. Uh, I think the first version of uh, From a Distance mm-hmm. was uh, was by Nancy, of course, in you know. The Love of the Five of Nine with uh, Kathy Matea. You know, they, these are songs that, that growing up would just, you know, they call them an uh, earworm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Love of the Five of Nine is, is like an eternal earworm. Yeah. It's like you'll hear that your whole life. Somebody can just say that name and I can hear the whole song. Yeah. <laughs> we had Susie Boggess on earlier this morning and featured Outbound Plane. There's another great Nancy Griffith tune, you know. So, And I always found with Tom T. Hall – you can hear one of his songs for the 50th time and suddenly hear a line that maybe the previous 49 you didn't hear and it just makes you smile or it's a poignant kind of thing that you just, that you didn't hear the first time. It, there's, there's such depth to those songs. Oh, Tom T was a poet. Yeah. And, and, and I mean, the kind, of, the kind of poet that, you know, really puts a lot of thought mm-hmm. <clears throat> in, in, into every line. And, and I'm, I'm the same way. I can listen to his songs today and still find that little nugget in them and go, damn, I didn't hear that at 20, but I hear it now. Yeah. <clears throat> I he, think uh, he's something real funny to, 
friend of mine one time, uh, Jimmy Melton. Jimmy Jimmy's one of my favorite songwriters from, from way back. But Jimmy, uh, he he plays uh, banjo and guitar in my in my traveling band. Tom T told Jimmy one time. He said, "Don't ever write a cheating song alone." <laughs> 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 oh, I love that. <laughs> oh, that's so good. We had, uh, I think you'll appreciate this. We had, oh, I miss him to this day, Jimmy C. Newman in studio one morning. And Jimmy yeah. C. remembers early on befriending Tom T. And he would walk up and down Music Road telling people what a great songwriter this guy Tom T. Hall was. And then he wrote Harper Valley wow. PTA, and everybody would be telling him what a great songwriter Tom T. Hall was. You know? right. So, <laughs> well, speaking of great songwriters, I think, my, I think my chronology is right on this. Before you ever had a hit as an artist, J.B. Johnson, um, you and Bill Anderson and... Uh, Incoming class of the country, uh, the uh, Songwriters Hall of Fame, Buddy Cannon, got together and wrote Give It Away. And that, boy, that was a game changer, huh? Well, uh, I've never had a hit as an artist. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, I would, think in, I would think in color, but it's pretty, ranks pretty high up there. So. No, radio stations wouldn't play it. Every, everybody thinks it was this big hit, and it, it just never was. It, it never made it at, at country radio. It's been played more posthumously since. <laughs> sense of, but no, it, it was never, never considered a hit. It never broke the top ten. Oh wow! Well, maybe we just featured it so much here. Well, we play good music on WSM. <laughs> I just assumed it was, it was, it was. So, but what, what, what was it like being in, Bill Anderson? To me, is just. It's just a marvel that at 80 and just recently celebrated 60 years as a member of the Opry, that he is just still so vital today, so sharp. It's he's he's just one of a kind. He is, uh, he's a versatile songwriter in, in that no matter what era of country music that has existed, Bill has songs that have been played and been, and been, uh, respected in that era all the way back to the fifties, mm -hmm. you know, he, and he can do it today. He can sit down today and write a song that ends up on some, some big artist next record. And not because it's Bill Anderson, but because it's a good song. Mm -hmm. He's one of those songwriters. You could just about take his name off of it. And the song would still do well. And people would wonder why is this song so, so catchy. And it's because it, 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 that that's the gift that, that Bill has, you know, he, when I sat down to write with Bill for the first time, I was, I was really, you know, a student, uh, Doing a tutelage under a mentor, mm -hmm. you know he doesn't he doesn't write on computers, he doesn't he doesn't use uh, gadgets. He takes a pencil and a legal pad, and uh, if you want to record it, uh, you know Bill has the old push play and record at the same time. <laughs> the old cassette player. <laughs> yeah, I, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, and I learned a lot from that because since writing with Bill for the first time, where I was basically laughing at him for writing with a pencil in it and a legal pad. Mm -hmm. I've had three computers crash and lost every song I've written. Oh, man. <laughs> it's happened three times. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, it's interesting you say that because one of my favorite exhibits at the Country Music Hall of Fame is the area where they have the handwritten lyrics to so many of the iconic songs in country music. And the thing I love most about is what the things that are scratched out, the lines that didn't make it. And I think if you're writing on a computer or dictating into an iPhone, and you can just erase the things you don't like as opposed to having the things you don't like live. And I think there's something magical about that. It is because it shows train of thought. Mm -hmm. um, and you don't just remember what the line is. You remember what the line wasn't. Yeah, because oh, that, really. that wasn't strong enough or it was the wrong direction. Uh, but it also helps later on when you're performing live uh, because you see that original handwritten lyric mm -hmm. in your mind, you know, while, while you're performing. And so, I don't know, you kind of you kind of remember all those little scratches and indentures and mm -hmm. nope, yeah. didn't mean that. And there's something, and there's something cool to see in something written on the back of like a, a cocktail napkin or an airplane <laughs> sickness bag from Delta Airlines or something. You know, you'll you'll write them down on just about anything. Yeah. You know, I don't. I haven't really gotten into that uh, that mode of you know the songwriting like that in such a long time now. But uh, when an idea hits you. 
it's best to stop everything. Mm-hmm. It, stop the wedding, stop the funeral, stop whatever <laughs> it is you're in the middle of, stop the baby from crying and, and jot this down because it, later on it's a missed opportunity and you'll never remember it in the same context as, as where it first hits you. Yeah. It's that light bulb so, moment, right? Yeah. Yeah. Willie told me he would wake up in, out of the middle of the night. He, he'd wake up. He kept pen and paper by by the bed. He, he'd wake up and jot those lines down and write that song right then if he had to. Wow. Yeah. When it hit you, you got to go. So how did you spend much of uh, uh, of 2020? Obviously, probably like a lot of us, not doing a whole lot. But were you, were you productive? Did you enjoy time off the road? Was the quietness maybe a good in a way? Oh, yeah. So... Uh, I'm a natural introvert yeah. and so my my house is a place that I hardly ever get to see in a normal year because of tour. And uh, so I, I got to come home and, you know, kind of get acquainted with my domestic. <laughs> my <laughs> domestic. I, I cook, I gathered recipes and, and just cooked and, and ate and cooked and ate and cooked. I, I must have gained 40 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> That's not even an exaggeration. It was almost exactly 40 pounds. When uh, Randy Hauser and I went back on uh, a couple, did a couple of acoustic shows starting in uh, February this year, we both gained so much weight. I told the people at uh, Billy Bob we were the biggest duo in country music. <laughs> that's good <laughs> so if eric and i were coming over yeah. for dinner tonight yeah. what's your what's your go-to what what's it this is your this is my can't miss meal Ooh, i got about 12 of them but, but really? a couple of oh, real- i like that baked ziti oh okay. yeah, yeah. Ooh, i like the big ziti uh, i'll make that with connect the sausage and uh and some other nice ingredients right. uh, awesome uh carla hall's recipe for meatloaf is my favorite uh and if y'all don't know carl hall she was the one on the uh the it was called the chew <laughs> she, oh yes i remember yeah. the chew yeah real <laughs> native crazy hair just beautiful woman i just i, I love spending time with. She, she's the one you know i thought i knew how to make a homemade biscuit in fact i was bragging on it and she heard me bragging and said well it's biscuit time we need to get together and, and make some biscuits that woman came in and schooled me in making biscuits. <laughs> I, I out my recipe. I changed everything I, I know about making biscuits. I, I got from Carla Hall now. Wow. Well, I'm going to see you tonight at the Opry. I'll be in for Bill at the podium tonight. I'm looking forward to that. I, I mean, I'll be happy to accept a Tupperware of, you know, leftovers if you want to you know, <laughs> donate. To, so. <laughs> hey, so we, we mentioned earlier Tom T. Hall and how sometimes you can hear a song for the 50th time and, and get something out of it that maybe you didn't hear on the first 49. In October of last year, you released a beautiful version of America the Beautiful. And I remember hearing it. And it's a song much like the National Anthem or the Pledge of Allegiance. It's just stuff you've known since you were like five years old. And sometimes you just do it. You do it by memory, but you're not paying attention. And I actually, your version made me sit and listen. And I love the fact that you did all the verses. And it's just, it's such a beautiful song. And I'm just going to ask what what led you to that. And we're going to feature it in its entirety when we wrap this up. But it just it's just terrific. Well, the country has always been stronger when it was united. Mm-hmm. And we've, we've been in an era now that's, that's lasted too long where people don't want to unite. They want to fight and they want to argue and they want to be right about something and they want everybody to know they're right about something. And that's not what's best for the whole country. And so to me, that, that song just kind of goes back to an era. If you remember the the, the few weeks and months after nine mm-hmm. eleven, wasn't a Republican or a Democrat in this whole country. There was Americans. You know that that's the bond. I think that that song uh, reminds me of. Yeah, it, it's as much us as this hate filled version of us is. So why why can't we? strive to get back to that version that better version of ourselves yeah i'm old enough to remember even as a kid appreciating the fact that a guy like bob dole and a guy like tip o'neill who probably didn't agree on a whole lot could after a day on capitol hill go have a couple of beers together and find some common ground and get things done you know uh i don't think i don't think we're that i i think it's achievable again you know 
I hope so. I really do. Yeah. I hope so. America is about so much more than the the, the divisions. Mm -hmm. You know, we should be. We're a better people than this. Well, I can't wait to see you tonight. You will be closing out the Tuesday Night Opry. And, and while I've had the pleasure of seeing you with a full band, there is a magic about a singer-songwriter and a guitar. And uh, it's going to be a pretty special tonight uh, on, the, on the Tuesday Night Opry. Thank you for your time, Jamie. Can't wait to see you. And we're going we're gonna to feature uh, America the Beautiful right now. Yes, sir. Thank you, buddy. Spacious skies for amber waves of grain for purple mountain. Thanks for listening to our Coffee Country and Cody podcast. Our program director at WSM Radio is J. Patrick Tittle. Our digital producer is Haley Hall. Marketing and Promotions Director is Amanda Cannon. And I'm Charlie Matos. If you like what you've heard, make sure you subscribe so you never miss an episode. And leave us a review on iTunes. It really does help new people find the show.